Welcome to the fifth video on analysis of loop responses. This video looks at steady state offset with disturbances on the input. First, let's remind ourselves of what we should know already. We're going to assume that students already know how to get steady state offsets for standard loops of the form shown here, where the offset is the steady state difference between the signal R and the signal Y which is usually the signal in here, E. Students should be familiar with the observation that a well-placed integrator will remove steady-state offset, obviously assuming that the closed loop is stable. In this video, we're going to look at the impact of adding a second loop input, which typically will be an uncontrollable disturbance. Here we go then. Here's a loop with two loop inputs. You'll see there's a loop input R, which we'll assume is the target, the value that we want Y to track. And there's another loop input here, which we've called D, which we'll consider as a disturbance signal. And this disturbance signal is affecting the system input, because you can see it adds onto the signal U before you go into the process G. Now, it's straightforward to show that the transfer, transfer function, or rather the Laplace transform for E, can be given as in this box here. So it has a dependence on R, 1 over 1 plus gm times R, and a dependence on D, minus G over 1 plus gm times D. You can derive these using superposition, and this topic is covered in some other videos. We also remember the final value theorem tells us that the limit as t goes to infinity of e of t is the limit as s goes to 0 of s, e of s. Finally, we're going to assume that the target is a step, 1 over s, and the disturbance is a stepwise disturbance, because otherwise you won't get a steady state. And we'll assume that the disturbance has got magnitude alpha. Now, applying the final value theorem to the Laplace transform for E is given in this box up here. The limit as s goes to 0 of 1 over 1 plus gm minus alpha g over 1 plus gm. And you'll notice, to get this formula, we've used the substitution r equals 1 over s and d equals alpha over s. Now, the earth, earlier videos looked specifically at the impact of the target, the signal r. This video, we're going to look only at the disturbance. If you want the total steady state offset, then you use the formula above, because you can get it from superposition. But all we're going to use is this part here. So I've written the E of D to show you that what I'm really saying is which part of the error depends on the disturbance signal D. And for that, you get the formula, the limit as s goes to 0 of minus alpha g of s over 1 plus g of s m of s. And you note here, this gives you minus y of d, minus the impact on the output. So what we're going to do hereafter is we're going to ignore this minus and this minus and just assume that this signal is giving us the impact on the output, which is equivalent to the offset in magnitude anyway. What happens then if there are no integrators in the loop? Well, if there are no integrators in the loop and we apply the final value theorem as just shown, then we end up with this formula here that the steady state output dependence on the disturbance is alpha g of 0 over 1 plus g of 0 m of 0, where you remember that alpha was the magnitude of the input disturbance. And the key summary is the input disturbance causes an offset in the output. It causes the steady state output to change. The disturbance will be partially rejected if m of 0 is large. However, it's quite possible for the disturbance to have a significant impact on the system output. It's very easy to show that this number here that I've circled can be bigger than 1 and indeed could be very big indeed. Some examples then. Find the steady state offset due to the input disturbance for the loop here and the numbers given in this green box. So I've got g equals 2 over s plus 1 s plus 4 m equals 6 times s plus 3 over s plus 10, and d is 0 0.2 over s, i.e. has magnitude 0 0.2. Now the formula we've been told to give us the steady state offset is here, alpha g of 0 over 1 plus g of 0, m of 0. So all I need to do is put in the numbers. So y 
of d equals alpha into 2 over 4 divided by 1 plus and then if we do the controller you've got 18 over 10 and g of 0 2 over 4. Now I'm given that alpha equals 0 0.2 that's over here so if I plug all those numbers in I'm going to end up with y of d equals 0 0.0 Five, three. Now, if you don't believe me, of course, you can uh, stick those in your calculator and check for yourself. That's just a reminder that this only works clearly if the closed loop is stable. Now, here's the plot. I've plotted the signal y of d here, and you can see clearly it's settling where we expected it to at a value of about 0 0.053. What happens then if we add an integrator into the process? So what I'm going to do is first put an integrator in g of s in the process. And therefore, using the final value theorem, I get this. The limit as s goes to 0 of g of s is infinite. If I now go back to the original formula, here it was. I wanted to do the limit as s goes to 0 of alpha g of s over 1 plus g of s m of s. You'll see what I can do if both those g's are going to infinity, then gm plus 1 becomes approximately just gm. So when I, could, I can ignore that one. So now I've got alpha g over gm, and therefore I can cross both g's. And what I get left with is alpha over m of 0. So the input disturbance will still give you a steady state offset. And that's an interesting observation. You can have an integrator in the process but if you have an input disturbance, you will still get a steady state offset. Here's an example to demonstrate it. So you'll see I've put an integrator in the process. There's g of s. m of s is just um, a lead compensator. And there's my disturbance 0 0.2 over s. And what I've said is the steady state output offset due to the disturbance is given by alpha over m of 0. So let's work out what this will be. For this case, it's going to be 0 0.2 over, and m of 0 is 1.8, which gives you 1 over 9, which is 0 0.1111, and so on. What we're going to do on the next slide is do the closed loop simulation for this loop and see what you get. And here we go, and you can see again, the 0 0.11 is indeed where the system settles. So the summary, if you put an integrator into the process, it's not going to remove the steady state offset for an input disturbance. Finally then, let's consider what happens if we put an integrator into the control law. Now the final value theorem gives us this, the limit as s goes to 0 of m of s is infinity. So if I go back to the original formula, y of d is the limit as s goes to 0 of alpha g over 1 plus g m. And in this particular case, you'll notice that it's m of s, which is going to infinity, not g. And therefore, you're going to get 0. An input disturbance will cause a 0 steady state offset when there is an integrator in the compensator. Obviously, as ever, assuming closed loop stability. So a final example here. There's the standard loop, and you'll see it's the same example as before, except I've moved the integrator to the compensator instead of being in G. But otherwise, the numbers are the same. And all I need to do here is say integrator in M of S implies offset equals zero. And there's the plot. So you can see it, and indeed, you'll notice that the plot tends to zero as expected. A few more examples just to reinforce the point. Find the steady state offset for a unit input disturbance with the following system controller pairs. So what was the formula that we were looking at? Well, we had y of d equals, and we had 1 over 1 plus, sorry, I've got that wrong, it's g of 0 over 1 
plus g of 0 m of 0. And therefore, g of 0 is 6 over 8, which is 0 0.75. So I've got 0.75. We've got that nice flashing window. That's a glitch with the software telling us, check your stable, check your stable. I hope you've done that. And we then got 1 plus 0 0.75. So that's what we get if m of 0 is 1. If m of 0 was 10, I'd get 0 0.75 over 1 plus 7.5. So you notice in this case, increasing the size of m reduces the steady state offset, which is not unsurprising, but clearly not equal to 0. What about this example? Well, here you'll notice I've put an integrator into g of s. And what we were told is the steady state offset is given by alpha over m of 0 for this particular scenario. That's what we derived in the earlier slides, where alpha is the magnitude of the input disturbance. And here we've chosen that to be 1. So the offset's going to be 1 over m of 0. I can now calculate this very, very quickly, because m is 1. So what you get is y of d equals 1. Quite a big offset. Okay? Despite having an integrator in the process, you've got a very large offset due to this disturbance. Different example. Now here, you'll notice I've moved the integrator into m of s. And therefore, the answer is that y of d in the steady state equals 0. No computation needed because the integrator is in the compensator, not the process. And another example. And you'll see we've emphasized here you can assume closed loop stability. And therefore, again, as soon as I see that there's an integrator in the compensator, I can say y of d equals 0. No steady state offset due to this input disturbance. In summary, then. For simple loop structures, which we've been assuming in this video, the system's steady state offset to a step disturbance in the input is easy to determine using the final value theorem, and you get straightforward formula. However, a warning. You are advised to derive these each time from first principles because, in general, your loop structure may be slightly different. And if you rely on memorizing formula and the loop structure is a bit different, you're going to be unstuck. But if you know how to derive the formula and apply the final value theorem, you won't care what loop structure you get. You'll be able to get the answer quite quickly. For the simple loop structure we've given here, you'll notice the offset can be 0 only if the integrator is in the compensator, but not if the integrator is in the process. And that's quite an interesting observation. The reason I've said can be is, of course, you need to assume that the closed loop is stable.